the last thing is, uh, one of our senators is Republican Senator David Vitter. <clears throat> and I actually saw him on the news a couple of days ago talking about this birther stuff. And that's where Republicans lose a lot of credibility with me, not just on um, uh, Tea Party coming up and blaming everything financially on Obama when they had eight years of Bush and people before that, but but, uh, but that and also this birther thing where they persist upon saying that this man is illegitimate when I'm pretty sure if he was Ill illegitimate, somebody would have found out by now. Thank you. That's all I had. Um, as to the... Uh uh, Bertha matter, let me be clear. Um, uh, the president is obviously a citizen of the United States. Um, it, it, you know, you can, you can see some kind of way of uh, how you could have a conspiracy to change the official records in Hawaii, but it sure would be difficult to go back into two newspapers and change the announcement that was made that bouncing Barry, baby bouncing, uh, bouncing baby Barry Obama was born in uh, Honolulu or whatever. It'd be hard to go back and change that in the public libraries across the country. Um, so, well, I, I was born, you know, they, they announced the birth in the papers back then. We didn't have HIPAA. So, uh, really, we do lose credibility when we spend time talking about such things. Why do we do that? Why would we do it? Because we want to vilify the other side. We want to make them into the, the big bad guys. Um, now, by that description, are you, in fact, criticizing your current House leaders, Mr. Boehner and Mr. Cantor, for being overly partisan? Um, I think that, uh, to some extent, we're getting what we deserve. We, we have basically decided to stir up a base, um, and uh, that's a bad decision for the country, because the country needs people here serving in Washington to say, listen, let's lead and let's help people to understand it does not help to put out misinformation about death panels, for example. There were no death panels in that health care bill. And then you lose credibility when you say things like that. You scare people. And then how are you going to get them to follow your lead as you say, listen, really, we need to make some changes here. And it's for our collective good, our common good as a nation. We're going to make some changes. So. That's the, that's the kind of leadership that I think we need. It's the kind that, uh, like I say, people like Rob Portman, who hope wins that Senate race uh, and uh, later becomes president, uh, uh, could, supply, could supply to the country. So how do you work together if your views about government involvement are very, very different? They are very different. Um, but let's start with some clearing up some misinformation. I followed a um, senior recently in a car that had a sticker socialism on the back of their car. Um, and I got close enough to read what it was said. It said socialism uh, is that system that works fine until you run out of other people's money. Um, well, that's a good understanding of how it is that we conservatives don't want to spend other people's money. But the people driving were seniors. And therefore, they're receiving Social Security, and they're on Medicare. And perhaps they were fairly young seniors. They might have an older relative in a Medicaid bed having run out of money, their own money. Maybe they're now converted to a Medicaid bed in a nursing home. Um, that's pretty much the society keeping up those folks. And so what we need to have is an honest conversation. Okay, do you, if, if that's the case, if we really want to have individual reliance, which is what I believe we should be doing, then let's figure out a way to do that. But that means changing. Medicare, Social Security, and Medicaid. The other thing that, uh, just to pick up an example, what I'm supposed to do as a Republican is just echo back to you and, yes, yeah, CRA was the cause of the financial meltdown in October of 2008. And if I said that to you, I'd be clearly wrong. Uh, because if you think about it, CRA had been around for decades. So how could it be that it caused the problem suddenly in October of 2008? The problem was over borrowing in our individual lives, in corporate lives, and in our country. That's what created the problem, along with interest rates being kept too low too long by the Fed. Those kind of things uh, are what created the financial meltdown in, 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 in October of 2008. It was not CRA. But I know that as a Republican, what I'm supposed to say is, yep, and that's exactly right, it's CRA, because you see, we conservatives don't like that program. So therefore, we can just sort of establish it as a scapegoat. Democrats like it. And we can, of course, uh, put a racial uh, sort of hue on that, and that makes it even more powerful. But we'd go, if we do that, we go further away from the solution. The solution is 
to deal with those fundamental things, not to pick up on scapegoats and run with them.